The Lord is risen. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Savior Jesus on this beautiful day that the good Lord has given to us that we can be here in his house gathered around his blessings and ready to receive his uh, Easter bounty. Um, does the fact that you're standing there mean you want to go first? You're just chilling? All right, well, then I'm going to go first. So today is LWML Sunday, Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday. Uh, so today is a day we do every year on the first Sunday of October to thank all of our ladies past and present who have participated in this organization, who have volunteered in the church, who have uh, helped and assisted in all the mission projects that LWML... <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting a call from ADT Solar right now. Yeah. Um, so if nothing else, you learned this morning that I have silenced all of my stuff up here. So, But anyway, we thank the ladies uh, for uh, what they do around here. And of course, I also take this day to say thank you for all of you who volunteer, uh, because without your volunteerism, we would not have a congregation. It's that simple. So thank you. Um, also, um, I want to uh, point out, and we haven't really given you any you know, warning on, on this, but um, back in June... The voters, meeting, the voters' assembly instructed the church council to come up with a plan to try and pay off the mortgage before it's due. So uh, the council came up with a plan. It was announced at the last week's voters' meeting. So basically what we're going to do for the next five Sundays, the Sundays of October, we're going to ask every family in the church uh, to give a, a gift beyond the tithe and put on that check, on, we're on the memo line, mortgage principal or mortgage or something, and all the money we collect in October, we're going to send it to LCF and put it to the principal of the mortgage. Uh, as of about four weeks ago, our mortgage was at $448,000 and change. So we're going to do this for five years and then see where we're at. And of course, if it gets paid off before that, if you guys are super generous, then we'll be done. But um, that's going to be the plan. Now, we did something like this back in 2004 or 2008. When we refinanced the church then, LCF asked us to do a capital fund drive, and we did. We raised about a quarter of a million dollars. So uh, if uh, uh, you feel so moved by the, the, the spirit, we would ask you uh, to uh, do that again uh, here this October. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can talk to me. I'd say talk to Nathan, but there, he's not here. here so. um, also, uh, we want to remind you that F3 is happening Wednesday. Uh, so we will be doing you know, dinner and confirmation at 6, and then Bible class is at 7. Uh, dart ball is at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Um, and I think that's all I have. Now, I know he's got something, but anybody else have anything? Yes, ma'am. Onward Christian Soldiers. Uh, sorry, I guess I should have mentioned that to you. <laughs> Any other questions? It is a good question. And that song is also in second service. So, um, All right, David. I have two announcements. Announcement number one is on out outside there on a table there's a collection of greeting cards and they've been donated so just take them if you look for a pile that you like and take it home and use them up a pile of envelopes as well okay second October is known as the pastoral appreciation month has been our tradition for the last couple of years, two years, three years, something like that, that we would have a meat offering during the, the uh, month of October. Well, we've done a really good job filling up their freezer. So rather than an actual meat offering, we're going to say a butcher shop gift card offering. And we'll have a box out here, and whenever you get your butcher shop gift card. The Meat House, there's a country farm meat place north of here. Anywhere you can buy meat and get a gift card, that's what we'd like to do to show Pastor our appreciation. I have a request in to Todd to find out from Sheila what we're going to do for her, but I haven't heard back yet. So we'll let you know later what, what we need to do for Sheila. Any questions? Clear as mud? Okay, thank you. 
and thank you in advance. Okay. So, uh, in terms of birthdays, Kathy Carfanta, if you're watching online, happy birthday tomorrow. And Russell Stengel, if you are watching online, happy birthday on Thursday. We have no wedding anniversaries this week. Apparently, October was not a, a big uh, time for weddings, although my parents, God rest their souls, they were married in October. So, anyway. Uh, October 12th, I believe, was their anniversary. So, all right, then let's go ahead and turn to our opening hymn here this morning uh, for our LWML Sunday, Christ is our cornerstone, and God bless our worship together this morning. Congregation will please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope for your salvation, O Lord. I rejoice at your word. Seven times a day I praise you. Great peace have those who love your law. My soul keeps your testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I hope for your salvation, O Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. We pray. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, by your grace hear the prayers of your church. Grant that those things which we ask in faith we may receive through your bountiful mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 6 beginning with verse 1. In the year of that King Uzziah died and I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke, and I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, 
having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken from the tongs of the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go, go for us? And he said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The epistle is from Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who had, did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also be with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we were all being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The congregation will now stand to sing the Alleluia in verse, and we will remain standing for the words of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the twelfth chapter. Jesus said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith this morning using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary. So for us under Pontius Pilate. To the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our sermon hymn. Oh. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for your sermon this morning, the biblical basis for our thoughts together here today, are the words of the epistle reading, which Gene read a few moments ago, the book of Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. I think we would all agree that there is something powerful and memorable about holding someone else's hand. I'll give you some examples. Picture this, these scenarios in your mind. Number one, a new parent holding the tiny hand of their newborn son or daughter. And of course, that's what we always do with babies, right? The first thing is we try and get them to hold our, our finger, right? Or a man and woman holding hands in front of a church and a pastor as they are being married. Or a family holding the hand of their loved one as he or she passes from this life to eternal life. Some examples. Holding hands can be a big deal. And I can tell you the first time that I held a girl's hand as a romantic gesture and I have to say as a romantic gesture because the first time I held a girl's hand was when I was doing square dancing in PE class in junior high in 1974. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're one of the poor souls like me that had to do square dancing in PE class. Okay. There's a few hands going up. Now, if you are somebody who enjoys square dancing, if you're in a square dancing club, if you take part in that activity, God bless you. I'm all in favor of you. But for me growing up, I listened to, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody and Meatloaf. That's the singer, not the meat, although I like Meatloaf that way too. Uh, and, you know, Boston and Ario Speedwagon. So getting there in PE class and hearing swing your partner round and round, put her in a toilet, flush her down, promenade all around. That's just not my idea of... So anyway, the first time that I held a young lady's hand as a romantic gesture was on December 6th, 1976 at about 2.35 p.m. in the uh, outside the large group science room and the corridor or outside the large group science room in West Bend East High School. And I'm not going to tell you the girl's name because I am broadcasting worldwide and I want to, you know, we're not going to use real names to protect the innocent. Um, <laughs> I, have not, I have not seen her since the night we graduated from high school. I, you know, but I'm just, but anyway. So I took her hand, she gave my hand a little squeeze, and we went about another second and a half, two seconds, and coming around the corner were two other girls from the high school, and they saw us, and one of them went, ooh, lovers! And she took her hand and went, Whoosh! And that was that. Nevertheless, a big day for me. I'll never forget that. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is that in a couple of minutes, I'm going to explain to you that today Paul's making very clear that unlike this, unlike this young lady who let go of my hand, Paul tells us today that God will never let go of you. So today is LWML Sunday, and as I think you're aware, that means Lutheran Women's Missionary League. It is an auxiliary organization of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. It has members throughout North America. They are a missionary group, first and foremost, sponsoring mission efforts, reaching people around the world. And they do that with mites. And if you don't know what that means, uh, in LWL they have these little boxes that are called mite offerings. You just put your pocket change in there, and you collect that, and they take all these uh, coins and small offerings and put them together, and it helps more people hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for decades... The LWML has given a strong witness to how God's love holds on to each of us. So our text for this LWML Sunday is the epistle lesson that we read here today. And I'd like us to consider the two questions raised by Paul there in Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? And if God is for us, who can be against us? And notice the main person being being the subject in these words. It's God. 
And you'll see this clearly in our text from Romans chapter 8. In a couple of weeks, we're going to start a Bible class here between services on Romans. We're just about done with Matthew. We'll be done here probably in a week or two. And one of the things you realize when you're dealing with the book of Romans is that everything's pretty much about God. And sometimes it's tempting to think that our success depends upon our grip, our hold, or our heroism. And it may be subtle, but that's a slippery slope in our lives because thoughts of self-dependence, thoughts of thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought, that's a Bible quote, can open the door to believing that we are the reason we are saved, and we are not. The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, gives a different perspective. He makes it quite clear that God's everlasting love holds us. While we are insufficient, He is all-sufficient. Right? So the outline for today's sermon on this LWML Sunday is simple but important. Section 1, because Jesus is for us and with us, we have no fear of condemnation. Because Jesus is for us and with us, we have no fear of separation. Because Jesus is for us and with us, we are certain of victory. That's what we're going to talk about today. So we start with the fact that Jesus is for us and with us, and therefore we have no fear of being condemned. Paul wrote, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? All things. What's Paul talking about here? What are those things? Well, Paul has just acknowledged that God has done everything for our salvation and continues to do everything. So all things means all of the good things in our life, in our lives. Anything that's good in your life, whatever it is, comes from him. And then Paul continues. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So Paul reminds us, why did Jesus die? To pay for our sins. Why was he raised? Because the Father accepted this payment. In other words, the check is cleared. It didn't bounce. And it was not found to have insufficient funds. He died so that we might live. And now Jesus is interceding for us. He's fully engaged in the battle for us. And so now I'm going to share a, a quotation with you from a lady named Corey Ten Boom. Maybe you've heard of her. I know she has kind of an odd name. You know, I see a couple of people looking at me going, Corey Ten Boom, what kind of name is that? Well, she was Dutch. She lived in Holland during World War II. And she was a little younger than I am now uh, when World War II started. And she and her family, when the Germans invaded and the Nazis started rounding up the, the Jewish folks, her family would hide Jews in their house until they could figure out a way to smuggle them out of the country and get them to England or to America. Okay. And, of course, somebody ratted them out, and Corey and her sister ended up in a concentration camp, and her sister was killed there. And like a week before Corey was scheduled to be executed, there was a paperwork snafu, and she was released. And she went back to Holland and helped in the rebuilding efforts there, and then she started writing books on how her faith got her through being in a concentration camp. She did speaking tours. She wrote a lot of books. And so one of her books is this quote. There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. And think about this personally in your own life. Because who of us in this past week since I saw you last has been perfect? On the other hand, how many of us have things that we regret that we've done in the past week? Have we spoken to a loved one in a way we wish we could uh, take back? Uh, have we said something that we regret? Have we spoken uh, wrongly? Have we been divisive in any way, whether it's in person or online? I mean, there's a lot of questions I could ask, but we're all guilty of our sins, right? The law is quite convicting. Because the law shows us exactly where we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
That's why we teach our confirmands, and I'm looking at the two that are here right this morning. That's why we teach you guys the Ten Commandments, so you know what God expects of us. The pit of our sins is pretty deep, but God's love is deeper still, just like Corey wrote so long ago. His arm is long and is able to rescue us. Indeed, his stretched out arms on the cross of Calvary did rescue us. And those same arms were made alive again when Jesus was raised from the dead. So Jesus is for us. Jesus is with us. Even though Satan wants to accuse and condemn you, the action of Jesus is evident. The result is clear. We have no fear of condemnation. We have no fear of judgment. Because Jesus saved us. Jesus saved you. And the important mission of the LWML shares this life-saving faith and life-giving truth with the world. For many decades through LWML, gospel seeds have been sown and the Holy Spirit works through that. So that leads us to the next point in our text. Because Jesus is for us and with us, we have no fear of separation. No separation from Jesus, no separation from God. So in your mind, picture hands joined together. Well, unlike that young lady in West Bend, Wisconsin in 1976, God will not let go of your hand. He will not let go of you. Paul, again in our text. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No! In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Could he be any more clear here? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now make sure we notice what Paul does not say here. He doesn't say that because we have God's love and because we have God's blessings that everything is going to be a tiptoe through the tulips. Sorry, I'm showing my age there with that quote. But he does not say that life will be free of challenges and difficult circumstances. Bad things happen in this sinful life. He doesn't say that distress or danger will not happen. And as I say that, I, th I think of the poor folks in southwest Florida or anybody else who was in contact with this hurricane this past week. In fact, he writes in great detail elsewhere, like in 2 Corinthians, about his own experience in facing these challenges. And we're going to talk about that in a few weeks in another sermon that I'm preparing for you now. And we know this from our own experiences as well, right? Each of us could make a list of the struggles we've had to face in the past, the struggles that we're facing now, if you did that, what would your list look like? What would your list include? Who would your list include? In many ways, you might feel like so much is stacked against you right now, but Jesus says you're righteous, you're forgiven, you're holy because of what he did. You are righteous and loved in Jesus. And our assurance comes from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to say it again. He will never let you go. And our Lutheran women in mission have served many people for many years whose lives seemed out of control. But God is always in control. And by His Holy Spirit, He has chosen to use the LWML and all of us to serve others in love. So with no fear of condemnation or separation, we come to our third point. Because Jesus is for us and with us, we have certainty of victory. And that victory happened when Jesus died and rose for us. And this victory was made yours personally through the gift of baptism. St. Paul says in Romans 6, this is not in the bulletin, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have newness in life. Baptism equals victory. Victory over sin, victory over death, victory over the power of the devil. So as Paul said, we are more than conquerors. We are super-duper winners. 
And a well-known hymn reminds us of, this, of this, and so I'm going to read to you a stanza of this hymn. I'm going to see if you guys can figure out what hymn I'm quoting here. See how you do. Double jeopardy round. No strength of ours can match his might. We would be lost, rejected. What? Ooh, you guys are good. But now a champion comes to fight whom God himself elected. You ask who this may be. The Lord of hosts is he. Christ Jesus, mighty Lord, God's only Son adored. He holds the field victorious. Yes, that's mighty fortress. Second stanza. That's why I thought I might get you some of you guys, but you're too good. I have a feeling at second service, it's not going to happen that fast. (laughs) We'll see. We'll see. Because you guys are the hymn singers. The other group there, you know, we don't sing so many hymns in that song, in that service. But our victory is not secure because of our hold on Jesus. Our victory is secured because of his hold on us. And we are more than conquerors because he holds on tightly to us. Therefore, we can live each day, including today, confidently trusting in Jesus. As a baptized child of God, remain in his word. Be reminded of your identity as being victorious in Jesus. Rely on his grace and remember how you were saved. By grace, through faith, on account of Christ. We are saved. God is with us, and the victory has been given to us. So today we thank our Lutheran women in mission for their hearts and hands that have shared this gospel with many around the world. We thank you for responding to the call of Jesus, and we thank you for your example and encouragement to each of us. And may our God continue to hold all of us in his love, the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord as we love him and share him with our neighbors. Remember, he will never let go of you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding may keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, please bless and receive these gifts which we give back to you from that which you have first given to us. Amen. The congregation will please stand. And we will now recite together the LWML pledge. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gifts of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. And in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your goodness and love in Christ that sustains us each day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is for us and with us in all things. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, our comforter and sustainer of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Guide, we pray, our congregation and our life together and witness in the world. Grant us your grace and strengthen your people through the word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. For the mission of the world, of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world, that each person involved would see opportunities to be salt and light to their neighbors and through various opportunities for mission. Through the faithful gathering of mites, may Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us to put all you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost. Lord, in your mercy. 
Sanctify our homes with your presence, reminding us that nothing can separate us from your love. Unite the members of all families in love toward you and each other. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, preserve us from paralyzed law and perverted justice. Strengthen those whom you have placed in authority to govern wisely, that we might live free of strife and contention. Bring our country unity. Bless all of those who are dealing with the effects of Hurricane Ian. And protect our troops, including Tyler, Thomas, Chris, and Preston, Evan, Cannon, Teresa, and David, Maya, Grant, Chris, and David, John, Ben, Debbie, and Seth, Vanessa, Kendon, Christian, and Matthew, Jacob, Jonathan, and Nick. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, remember those who suffer from stress, strife, illness, or affliction. Especially we pray for those who are listed in our bulletin insert this morning, and we give special emphasis to Merle Wagner, who is now home uh, from the hospital. We also take a moment now and pray silently in our hearts for all those that we know to be in need of the, the grace and healing and mercy that only you provide. Heal and deliver them according to your will, and when your answer seems slow, strengthen them by Christ's righteousness to await your timing and live by faith. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, 
your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Congregation may be seated. Now the feast of the Lord is prepared for the people of the Lord. Come to the feast.
the congregation and I'll stand to put, sing the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. We will remain standing for our closing hymn, and just for clarity, we sing the left-hand column first, so the second verse is uh, uh, the one on the bottom, and the third verse is top right, okay?
Well, that concludes our public worship together uh, here this morning. We'll try and get Bible class going here in the next 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, God be with you and bless you this day and this week.